to watch that video, but not now. Come on, YouTube, do your thing. What? It actually works? Come on, YouTube, do your thing. Wow, man. What? It actually works? Hello, Blue Cat. Wait, what? How did you get here before even me announcing the stream? Anyway, I'll wait for a couple of minutes. And I'll actually start explaining how I managed to make this stream, stream happen at the very last minute. Like, the thing is, how I decided is if the stream should happen or when. I basically was just run like went through my Discord voice chat. Some people probably uh, saw that. Oh, you're on push notification. Thank you. Anyway, the thing is, went to the Discord, randomly chatted with people um, while while I just wanted to play something. So decided to play BMG. Then people started telling me that I should do the challenge video finally. And hello, Tofik. So, we made a deal. I'm gonna go drifting in beam. And if I spin out more than once in a um, time of 7 minutes of drifting, I'll make the sleeper video. And as you can see, I did spin out. But I spun out 3 times. Instead of 1. Though the requirements were 1. So, yeah. Here we are. I'm making the video right now. <laughs> yeah, Rocco... And Morgan held me at gunpoint, pretty much. This is a muscle car. Nice, thank you. I don't think that's really useful for the stream. So, gonna begin any second now. Damn open diffs. Open diffs are for pussies. That unmanageable. Anyway, let's start. So, first vehicle. Apparently, is an Oldsmobile Delta from 1988, or the mo or the 88 it belongs in the model name. I don't exactly know, but I need to find it in this massive ass left list. Oh uh, shit! Come on. Did I just go past it? OME, old cow. Well, it's supposed to be Oldsmobile. Where the fuck is it? God. I did export it, I'm like 100% sure of it. I just need to find it somewhere. So, pardon me for taking several decades for doing this. Or did I actually not export it? That would be... Nope, 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 there it is. Phew! Wrong car, oh my fucking god. Again! Oh no. This is so damn laggy because I have so many cars. There we go. You could be fucking kidding me. You you're having this game is having a piss at me. Holy shit. There, this thing. Thank you for fuck's sake. That only took as I expected several decades. So let me quickly Google Oldsmobile Delta 88. I wanna see how it looks in real life and then how it is made in here. 1968, I need 1988 probably. This is most likely 1988, yes. Okay, has a lot of interesting grill options, as I can see in real life. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, this signature seems to be the closest to it being in real life. So let's see. 
the bumpers are really correct. The vent is correct. The license plate is missing. It should be over here. And it might have added a badge. But the lights are actually spot fucking on. Could have added a chrome lining. But the front is really damn nice. Sides. There's the strip over here. Kind of-ish missing. Though it's not exactly required. I like uh, the bumper bars on the side, that's everything's really really nice and sweet. The mirrors are supposedly painted the car color instead of being fully plastic, as I can see from multiple options. That's not that big of a deal, it's fine. Four door, everything's nice. And the rear, let's see, hold on for a second. It has one of the most weirdest rear lights of all vehicles. I don't really understand why this is, this, these bits are so white. Let me try searching up for new options for other, for other pictures of the vehicle. To see, to validate the truthfulness of that. So, oh, alright, I'm kind of sorry you only see the screen in game, which is eh. You can't really see me searching the pictures, of which I'm a bit sorry. Anyway, the back. I don't understand why there's like these bits are white ish, and the indicators are actually quite massive, so these red bits should be actually orange to represent indicators, but since this is America, they're allowed to be red. But the indicators are these, so not really, not that correct, but has that line, it has the the trunk rack thingy, a, a bit of a weird spoiler. Okay, so it actually looks like a pretty boring vehicle, I like that. Now I'm curious, what the fuck can this do? I'm kinda scared, I'll try to drive it normally at first, because it should drive normally. Before I drive it, I should give it a rating for visuals, um, on the scale from 1 to 10. In my opinion, this is definitely- oh my god, the rear lights are massive. I would say, in how well this is remade. It should be around... I'll, I'll give it an 8 visually so far. So let's see, try driving normally. So it looks like a boring vehicle. So you can go on a little stroll in town. Ooh, I like the 80s antenna. <laughs> That's not bad. A little stroll in the town, for example, driving on 50, being decent, a normal human being. The, the brakes are really damn nice, not too tight, didn't lock them up, I'll find over there. This, this seems actually pretty drivable in city traffic. Let me try to do a corner which should usually um, end up in a spin out. Nope. Like, I mean, I barely added a gas, but it. But it behaves. Okay, let's see what it can do. How much of a sleeper it is. Oh my god, what the fuck? This is a track beast. It's all wheel drive, I believe. Or front wheel drive. I actually don't know. I think these things are even front wheel drive, so it could be front wheel drive. I need to I need to do some burnouts. So okay. Wow, that's brutal. That's brutal. And the suspension is completely fine with this. 
like, wait, I'm curious. The suspension is decent enough. Oh, one problem though. It has, um, how was this called? Sequential gearbox. And that can seriously be noticed in the car if you look through its window. Oh my god, this is fast. But it's actually really well built. It handles. It handles insanely. What the fuck? took that corner in such high speed. Wow. Like, mechanics of this are amazing behind this car. I want to get the grid. Actually, which wheel drive is it? Is it all-wheel drive? Oh yeah, it is all-wheel drive. That's like one of the best all-wheel drive cars I've driven. If I can drive, that is. All-wheel drive is really weird to slide around with. Wild Delta. Oh my god, it looks so boring stock, but it has this much power. S around 700 horsepower. Holy, a bit more than 700. Holy shit. Okay, my head is spinning. Oh my god. Oh my god, please no. But look at those tires. Shit. That kind of gives away that it's a sleeper. Plus the sequential gearbox. Eh. Dual exhausts, I mean, that's fine. But the tire thickness and sequential gearbox kind of gives it away that it's a sleeper. But that's like the only two things. But I love how basic it looks. Pristine. So, the second rating which I'm giving is how original it looks. As in, uh, no, wait. That doesn't make much sense, what I just tried to say. Um, second rating is how easy it is to see that it's a sleeper, and this is, I mean, the tire thickness is ridiculous. And sequential, yeah, but it actually is really damn stock, as I, as I must say. So, the rating, I guess I can give it another 8. And now, drivability of this vehicle. It did drive around the town, like, town speeds, like it actually had enough grip and decency to, to drive normally to hide the fact that it has that much power but, and the drive itself, it's actually tuned to perfection like, the all-wheel drive system on this thing is wow it's so nice like, it doesn't want to slide it just has all the grip, I mean, I can see this is on semi-slicks which is a bit of a downside to be honest that's a bit too insane i guess it's supposed to be a drag car if it's on semi slicks with all wheel drive semi slicks doesn't make much sense so i mean i did not make any rules of excluding any kind of materials or anything but the drive of this thing is amazing i mean it's not I'll, like, one thing which might sound weird, it's not as fun as I expected it to be. I mean, it's really nicely drivable, but there's no insanity factor in it. Like, okay, the acceleration is absolutely brutal, and the way how it handles, I love it. But, there's just... It's too tame! I'll give it another 8, like, all, from all three ratings, just all straight 8s. <laughs> okay, let's move to the next vehicle. Next vehicle is Land Rover Defender, oh my god. There we go, this thing, I actually managed to find, find this. Now let me quickly look up pictures of it. I accidentally typed Lard Rover Defender instead of Land. But 
whatevs. So, I'll be curious to see how well this is made. Okay, there we go. Well, there's, I mean, there's nowhere to go wrong. Uh, this is such a basic vehicle, you can't really go wrong with it. I mean, you could have written Defender on the hood, but that's fine. The scoop, the door, like, this is like maybe a bit too big, but that's how it actually is. The window, the everything. Okay, I want to see the back of it. The front and the sides are pristine, 100% spot on, like, wow. And the back of this... Oh, that's supposed to be the Land Rover badge, 4x4. Four four. These should be a bit higher up, like in over here. The mirror is here, everything, the latches on the door. This is perfect! This is an actual Land Rover perfectly rebuilt in automation, holy shit, dude. I mean, it's a really boxy car, so it's kind of easy to make, but... Dude, you got it. You got it. Ten out of ten, basically. So it looks like the real deal. Like you actually get ten points out of ten for the looks because this is perfect. I mean, it's okay. You have built it really damn well. Now, second category is how easy it is to say it's a sleeper. Well, the suspension drop is really damn noticeable. I'll give you that. The suspension drop is insane for a jeep, but everything else is quite stock, so, oh, it's automatic? Oh, sem duo clutch, okay. Sounds brutal, like, I'm afraid to push the pedal down. Yeah, 4% of gas, and you keep it on 50, okay. Uh, actually, it doesn't even have that much power, judging by the power curve on the bottom left. Okay, the handling is really decent. What? Wait, did it, did it just reveal? Oh my god, it reveals. Even on f driving on 50, I mean, I did corner really t um, like tight, but revealing not a good thing. Okay, let's see what this does. Like, it's a damn Land Rover Defender. Oh god, it's revealing a lot. Sounds like a fucking Ferrari! Oh, damn. Okay, I might need to, like... Oh my god, I... I actually flipped it. The suspension needs serious work. Let's put it in dual clutch. And pretend we're doing a pull on the highway. Actually, let's get on an actual highway. Quickly, since there's one right next to me. Oh god, it, it handles weird, it's really wobbly. But it's insane. I'm kind of afraid to turn it. I mean, I know it's a jeep and it's not meant to be, like, super glued to the ground, but still, it's scary. So... Like this... On 50. Let's go on 50 and then just pull. And go. Oh my god, it pulled so hard. 
This would destroy a lot of rides. Oh no, it lagged and I've locked up the brakes. Can I... Oh, shitty niglet. I did not say that, you heard nothing. Okay. Sort of saved it. Let's get on with the video. So, how easy it is to recognize that this is not a sleeper? The tires, sports compound. I, well, I mean, that's normal. If you don't intend to actually drive this off-road, that's, that's normal to have non-off-road tires in your vehicle. But that insane drop, like, it should be sitting way higher. The insane drop of this thing is just giving away so much. Like, I have to just give it a 6. Mm, when it comes to how easy it is to spot that this is a sl sleeper. Because that insane drop... Gives it, ins like, really damn fast away. And how fun it is to drive? Well, since it's three-wheeling, a lot. But it pulls real damn hard. But the fact that it's three-wheeling, and I even managed to tip it over. I know that just increasing the height of the suspension will actually increase the chances of it still tipping over. Like it is a jeep after all, but now it's like, it's a jeep and you made it into a sleeper, but you lowered it so everybody knows something's wrong with it, or something's been done to it, and the suspension still ain't nice, even if it's lowered. So I'll give it that another 6. But visually, like, comparing this to the stock car, the body, the fixtures, are spot on. Great job, dude. Like, wow. Now, next one is Mercedes E500. If I can find it. There we go. So, E500, okay, there we go, I assume this is supposed to be 1994 or something. Or not. Um, I'm a bit lost, which year is this supposed to be? If the front is definitely 1994 of W124 body, the grill is not really accurate. There's supposed to be a line in the middle, like typical Mercedes thing. I do like the badge. Everything is like that, like that is done perfectly. The indicators are supposed to be square. Not any of the like fog lights are actually you're supposed to be square. But I like the addition of wipers in the front headlights. That is really spot on. The single wiper, nice touch. That's really how it is for Mercedes. The front lights are a bit, well, automation limited. <laughs> because this is like too far. And the back for W124. Spot on, like, let me see the back, quickly in a picture, you could have added a um, little strip on the rear bumper to represent molding, like the sides were pretty damn clean, I think the door handles are a bit wrong to be honest, those are like BMW door handles, Mercedes actually had the way cleaner ones back then. The lip is okay. The rims are actually correct. And the rear, I mean, the rear lights, again, this dripping thingy on the body 
but that's like automation limited. I'm not going to give a massive penalty because of that, but that does not really fit. And the wheels are probably way too big though. But okay, let's see what it can do. Ooh, manual. Oh my god, I can see the power curve. This makes insane amounts of power, but it's also insanely laggy. This is getting real hard to drive in city traffic. Even the tiniest amounts of power makes this thing accelerate. I I can't push my pedal and not like as little as like I don't even know how to explain this. I can't push my pedal so merely that it stays on a speed without accelerating. Wait, did I manage to get three percent on my pedal there? Three, okay, three percent. It's still accelerating till like 40. Can I get it like 2% or 1? Like 1% throttle? Okay, 2% throttle. Oh, I did it. This works. This is hard. But okay. So, the turbos haven't kicked in, so the acceleration ain't that impressive. Let's go in an actual zone where turbos kick in now. Oh my god, this is quick. It understeers heavily, then it's drift. This is this is tuned like a track car. This is a serious track car tune. for test car unlimited and I can drive this as for fun and try to set a lap time because I can see this this has actually a bit of a potential without that fucking power. It's more like built for that. But okay let's see. Oh my god this is fast. I'm afraid of this corner. I'm genuinely afraid. Be a bit careful with the brakes! Oh my god, Walt! Just a tap, just a tap. Nah, fuck. This is. like. how hard can it accelerate? Okay. Is it all wheel drive as well? Like, are. are all the vehicles all wheel drive? Yes, it's all wheel drive. All the vehicles are all will drive for me, or what? Absolutely brutal. Oh my god, this is a... That was a bad idea to try drifting that. <laughs> brutal pull away. This is bad. This is real bad. Reset before crash. Whew. Okay. Okay. So, scoring. How well this is made for the original car? I mean, I know these are automation bugs, but there is a way how to avoid it by manually recreating the whole the all the lights by putting them piece by piece to avoid such things. But even then, it's pretty pretty uh, well made, but did forget a bumper like molding on the back rear bumper 
And the front grille ain't really correct. But every, and maybe the door handles, as I mentioned before, and the rim size could be a bit too large. So that is a couple of issues. Which sums up in the general build of this vehicle, I'll give it a 5, to be honest. Sorry, a bit low, but, well, I assume you understand why. So, how hard it is to understand if it's a sleeper? Well, here's the thing. It's 500. 500 usually indicates that it's 5 liters. And 5 liters of anything is kind of handful. So if somebody sees the letters 500 on back of a Mercedes, he knows that he shouldn't mess with that. Because 500s in general were fucking quick. Even though they're supposed to be luxury cars. So, if you would add, literally change the numbers to like, 220, just 220, which was like, one of the lowest engine packages this thing came with, that, or just 200, that would be actually quite funny. But okay, that's just badging, let's, let's not really mess with that, because people put M3 badges on 1.6 liter in BMWs, so whatever. The wheel size and thickness is absolutely ridiculous. So, I'll have to give minus points for that. And the lip. Um, these things normally didn't really have lips. They did have spo little spoilers, like the sporty version. But an actual lip, not really. But besides that, it does look pretty damn stock. Mm, I'll give it an 8 for how easy it is to recognize from an actual sleeper, like how easy it is to spot that it's a sleeper. But I do love the fact that it's in the manual gearbox. Good job, dude. Now, driving wise, this thing. How to put this? The engine makes stupid amounts of power, like insane amounts of power, but therefore it's really laggy, and to achieve like it makes makes 200 like 40 50 ish horsepower without the turbo in the bottom end which is probably even less than the actual 500 S uh, SL or E500 makes and the fact that the turbo kicks in so damn late to actually get all that insane power out of it is a pretty big downside if you ask me. Which I mean, it could be an upside if you want to daily drive into town, because then you just do it in low RPMs, and if you want to race, you do it in higher RPMs. So you don't use utilize, so you don't have all that power while driving in traffic, which is kind of a lot safer. But in this exact situation, I don't think that really helps much. But it does handle really well, I'll give it that. So... Handling wise, I'll give it an 8 again. Today I'm really giving out 8s everywhere. Let's move on with the next vehicle. Oh, this is gonna be something funny. As far as I noticed. Volkswagen Transporter T3. Oh my god. Oh my god. Like looking at pictures of it already. I know it's the American version being built. I think that's the American version. The front lights are different size, they're supposed to be same size. I like the badge, that's done perfectly. Um, it's a bit of a mix of European version and American, because... I don't think these fog lights are exactly applicable for Americans. The front bumper is correct. Uh-huh. 
the front grill is okay. The license plate is actually supposed to be on top of the bumper instead of the grill. But sure, okay, fine. Roof rack, no, like, no, it has like a little sunroof and roof rack, that's really nice. The sides look really damn prestigious. Like, really unlike Volkswagen. But I do love the amount of effort. That's really well, well made. Like, all these little lines, like, holy shit, dude. You probably took an eternity to do that. So, props to you. And the rear. Um. Lol, feathered. Uh, <laughs> okay, that's cool, that's cool. And all the little lettering. Shit, and the steps. Wow, this is like the most tricked out package. <laughs> okay. Four by four. Oh, I love the vent here. That's that's spot on. Almost. It's supposed to be a lot squarer, but I'll I'll give that a pass. This looks really damn nice. Visually, like, it might be even too much, but the most basic ass rims, I mean, the amount of fixtures on this, wow. Um, now the thing is, if I wanted to give it 9 or 10, because the front is a bit of a mix-up of European and American. The front uh, lights are not the exact same size. At least I believe so, or they are. I can't really tell, but yes, they are not really connected, which is a bit odd. But the indicator is a really nice touch, they're done perfectly. Like, there are tiny little mistakes which want me to give it a 9, but the amount of um, time put into this wants me to give it a 10, because holy shit, all these fixtures. And all the little detail of transporter. Like, fuck. No, just, just for the amount of detail and work, I'll give it a 10. This thing is pristine. Now let's drive it. How much power does it make? Oh my god. It's NA and it makes a ridiculous amount of power. This is also a bit hard to handle, to drive normally. It just accelerates no matter how much gas you press. So you are going 4th or 5th gear. No, it even accelerates then, what the fuck. Okay, let's try seeing the sleeperness in it. Whoa, bouncy! I... Okay. Oh my god, the suspension is so bouncy on it. Oh. Okay, I mean, it's a van. It can have bouncy suspension. But the fact that it wants to tip over and the wheels don't stay on the ground. This is a massive handful. Well, I want to see how well it accelerates a straight line. Oh my god, it does front wheelies. Like, a break, a break and it wheelies. I want to do that again. Oh my god. Oh my, oh my god. I'm breaking. The, the back lifts up. What the fuck? How is that possible? Okay, this car is gonna be rather quick in this scaling. Does it look like a sleeper? 
Yes, besides the damn tires. Again, they're a massive ass giveaway. But that this time it's only the tires, so I'll give that a 9. Drivability. It tips over. It I mean I can't really judge for it for its handling how well it takes a turn. It's a fucking van. So okay, fine. That it, I, I can avoid judging that. But the fact that it wants to just tip over, drive on two wheels, and it does wheelies, like reverse wheelies, when braking. That's not something a sleeper should do, or anything, in fact. Uh, this is like almost on the point of undrivable, to be honest. Drivability, I'll give it a three. three. Three, because the acceleration from 0 to 60 is fucking amazing. In a straight line it does wonders. But it can't do anything of much, and this is just... A, a, like, I don't want to insult the creator, but the... The braking part is a bit of a joke. Next vehicle. Supposedly a Porsche 911 Carrera. If I can find it. There we go. That wasn't so hard. So let's see. Carrera. Which year is it though? 1986? But I guess that's pretty close. Well, as I can see, it's intended to be a sports car as itself. That does not really make it look like a sleeper. Um, I mean, I do love the detail. Like, the amount of detail on this is quite amazing. But it by itself is is made to look like a sports car. Which kind of gives away that it's stupidly fast and faster than its original state. So, not entirely a sleeper to be honest. But I do love how it's made. There's no rear lights. Well, let's see what it does. Dual clutch, okay. Um, excuse me, how much power do we have? Over a thousand again. Oh, ball sack. I'm surprised nobody has yet made a car that's just purely for fun and burnouts. Everything's all-wheel drive. So I'm judging it like it should be a sports car because it's all-wheel drive, meaning it should actually handle. Okay, well, it drives decent. I'll take that back for a second. There's no lights in the back, so it's not even street legal, to be honest. Maybe I'm missing more with the rear lights, but... This thing is brutally quick, but the... It needs aero. It needs aero work. The aerodynamics are absolutely cocked. It's either another mod I'm missing, I hope not, but... Oh, balls. I mean, it's scary, which is kinda cool, but... It needs arrow, it doesn't stay on the road at all. And the suspension is way too soft for this thing. Okay, that was my bad, I'm sorry. But like, the wheels pop out of the arches and look, look, like, I can almost make it wheelie. Let me do something stupid. Okay, that doesn't really work. 
Like there, I made a wheelie. I made it actually wheelie for a bit. Like it did pop off the ground for a second. So the suspension is quite terrible. Okay, so scoring, how it looks, it's as itself. It's a track car. I can say that already. Look wise, even for a track car, okay. The rear lights are absolutely missing. Then again, track car doesn't really require those, but this is not what this is supposed to be for. I do like the fact that he tried to make the front headlights like an actual old Porsche by adding these old school ones. That's a nice touch, and I know that's the best you can do with the, uh, to remake the Porsche body. Therefore, I'm not gonna judge that wrongly at all. That's actually a bonus from me. But uh, it's a sports car. I can't really judge it to anything. Like it's not original. <laughs> What to do over here, seriously? Hmm... What to do in this situation? I seriously don't know. Okay, it's a sports car. I don't know what kind of a category it even is, I have no clue what it's supposed to represent. So... Visually... I'll give it um, a 6, because it's not made to be a road car. But I do appreciate the effort made into this vehicle. It just doesn't really belong in this exact challenge. Now, the fact that it separates this from a normal car and a sleeper, how easy it is to spot that this is a sleeper. Well, it's insanely wide, and it has, and it's a sports car overall looking, so that's kind of a zero points. Like, I hate to be harsh, I actually really hate to be harsh on some of the creations, but this is a bit wrongly put in here. This is an actual sports car, so people expect shit from sports cars. Handling-wise, it can handle, kinda, but the suspension is like way too soft. And the uh, aerodynamics are absolutely all over the place. Handling wise... Mm, I'll give it a 4. Like, you need to fix the aero, make harder suspension, and just remove all the paint and the nut littering so it looks like a standard porch and add rear lights. Then that's cool, then this will fit in. Currently, I'm sorry dude, not really. Next thing is... A Mini Cooper. How cute. An actual cute thingy. Come on, load in, please, 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 please. Let me quickly Google Mini Cooper. 19, 19, whatever. So let's see. Front. Indicators. The license plate for some reason is on the hood, but. Mm, it should be down here. Okay, that's a minor problem. The chrome lines on the side. Why is that? Oh, that's a hippie badge. Okay. Indicator on the side. I don't know from which year that comes with, from. But. Oh, wait, there is no indicator on the side. I'm a retard, sorry, pardon me. The chrome bits, I don't know. I guess that can be custom. Okay, fine. The front lights are kind of from a rally car. The back of it. The back of this. The rear lights are a bit too small, but the bumper is okay-ish. The license plate is again, not low enough, just completely overlaying something. Or wait, it's actually supposed to be there, my bad. The fuel cap is spot on, the latch is spot on. 
Okay, and the white roof. Holy shit, it's a mini. Looks like a pretty stock and basic mini. Ah. Okay. So those lines came with fixtures, okay. Like that fixture with painting. And Morgan says you thought you would be do doing drag racing. Yes, but sleepers ain't all about drag racing. Like, they're cool on the track, but they, they ain't all about drag racing. As I said, they're meant to just completely baffle people and make them say what the fuck when they see that thing on the road. Whoa, okay, this is, um, unique. This is probably... Second... Second the least powered car over here. Which is still 600 horsepower, holy fucking balls. 600 horsepower and something like this. Well, there's decent, somewhat decent to drive around. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god, that's a wall, that's a wall, that's a wall! It's a bit turbo laggy, oh my god, this is insane! What the fuck? It's so light with this much power. There's no handling at all. Is it front wheel drive or all wheel drive? I can't. It feels like all wheel drive. Let me do this corner and see. Okay. No, I need from the side. Yep, it's all wheel drive. That's literally everything. Well, I can see it has only one mirror. Either I broke the one off, or it purposely has only one mirror, which was a thing back in the day, having only one mirror for the driver, and it's a mini, so the driver's side is at the right. Whoa. This thing's quick. And really damn fucking drifty. This is scary, yet cool at the same time. But it actually can handle. So let me, like, do this. Let me actually bog down. I wanna drift this little zigzag. Up. The handbrake isn't enough. Oh my god, that's a wall! Let's pretend that didn't happen. I want to go to an open field with this. <laughs> you can be absolutely insane with this. Whoa. This is insane. And yet so much fun. No, no, that's a sidewalk. Let's pretend you didn't see that. Three wheeled for a bit there, but okay. Oh, I'm gonna kill myself. 
<laughs> wow, I added a lot of positive camber over there. Like, I want to do a lap, like, actual race style. Like, actually racing a full lap. Wow, it bought a belt, whoops! It's not meant to have him handle such g-forces, it's a fucking mini! Oh shit! He might need a bit of arrow, or I completely fucked it up there. I'll give that one more shot. Because this thing is slidey, like it really loses grip quite quick, but yet it's drivable at the same time and you can have loads of fun with it. Oh shit. But it's not also undrivable, it's, well, it does slide quite a bit, but you can't expect too much from this. It's a 600 horsepower fucking mini. Behave. Let's go. Let's just roll through this. Bit of gas. Brake fading, oof. Well, I guess you can't really put big enough brake pads to stop all that speed in this ship. Oh my god, I think I'm gonna have no brakes after one lap at all. Yeah, I have no brakes almost. But oh my god, this thing is amazing. You can have shitloads of fun, you can actually drive this normally. Like, you, like, normally. Then, you can even raise this. Because it handles well enough for that as well. Um, I, uh, um, the thing, okay, um, how original it is. This side thingy, not so much, but, okay. These are the actual official rally lights for the Mini, but I don't understand why the license plate is over on the bonnet but the back is like everything is like really spot on for it almost but those little tiny mistakes I'll give it I'll give it an 8 because I'm just really well giving away with 8s today <clears throat> so how well how easy it is to see that this is not a sleeper or it is a sleeper well it has a bit of a drop well, quite a bit of a drop, but, I mean, you can't really notice that on a little mini. It's supposedly the rally version, but even then, those were, like, slow as hell, to be honest. I mean, they're good around the corners, but, like, from 0 to 60, they're slow as fuck. 
So this is almost spot on. Like I'm gonna give it a nine for how even well this is hidden to be um, to be a sleeper. And handling, it drives normally. You can race it like really damn fucking well. You can race it. It handles pretty good, and you can have loads of fucking fun by doing donuts and everything. The handling is a fucking ten for a sleeper. Dude, this is like almost the perfect car. Okay, but one more car remaining. An old Ford Fiesta. Oh god, I love those things to be honest. Those old school things. <clears throat> so, 1985 Ford Fiesta. Quickly googling how it looks from the front. I assume this is the. S okay. The front grill is a bit weird. Oh, it's not supposed to be 85, it's supposed to be 1982? Fiesta. Yeah! 1982 Ford Fiesta. The license plate is spot on. The window wipers are a bit... What the hell kind of placed. But okay, I'll let that slip. So... Front lights and everything. And grill. Pretty spot on. The bumper is pretty damn good. Okay. The sides... This black line is perfect trim. What it has, there's only one side mirror, but okay. <coughs> Pardon me. It's a bit of a spoiler. Well, I guess it started out as a hot hatch, so it could have a little lip over there. The exhaust is massive. The rear lights are pretty damn correct. It actually is the ad basic. It actually is that basic. The real life card is actually as basic as this thing. Okay, cool, cool. Let's see, well, let's drive it. Oh, it sounds like a car back from that era. Why is the license plate just wobbling all everywhere? What the fuck? So weird. Is it front wheel drive or all wheel drive again? Oh, it's front wheel drive. Finally, a two wheel drive car. Oh my god, everything's all wheel drive. Okay, so as I can notice, this has 150 horsepower. So. Not really sleeper-ish, but kinda in that area. Not really yet. Why is the rear license plate wobbling? What the fuck? It's so loud as well. Oh shit. Let's pretend that didn't happen and instead of enjoy some donuts. pretty sporty, I'll give you that, even with just 150 horsepower, but that's not the sleeper what I had in mind exactly. This is a perfect hot hatch, this is a perfect hot hatch.
That's what it what it is. I just love the fact that it's actually front wheel drive instead of on um, all wheel drive or four by four is everything in this challenge. corners with front wheel drive. Oh, shit. I wanna try to take in this corner really aggressively. Oof. <laughs> that was pretty sweet. Shit. I want this to be tighter. Ouch. Martin says, I, uh, he tried to make it more like what could do, what you could do putting a modern engine in an old Fiesta. I think the engine is just a 1.6 with big carbs and huge exhaust. Could be. Oh yeah, two de um, Dever car carbs, not de Dever, but how are those called? front is my person and the sold axle of the rear. Yeah, I can see that. Um, I truly do believe that that's how it was in real life. So I actually do appreciate that you did that. Like, here's the thing, what I, what I thought of it is from the start. Like, it's a hot hatch. But nobody expects them to be really damn fast. So, okay. Visually, comparing this to the real life thing, how well this is made. Like, the windshield wipers are a bit of a clusterfuck, if you ask me. But everything else on this vehicle is spot on. I mean, it's, those are not the original wheels, but they do look cool. And. People can argue if that's what gives the sleeper away or not. I would prefer completely stock wheels like Steelies. But these look really cool on this. Which kind of gives the way that it's a sleeper, I don't know. But comparing this to the original, just the windshield wipers. Everything else is like spot on. But the thing is, it's a somewhat pretty rather basic vehicle. I can't really give it a 10, I'll give it a 9. Which is still second highest fucking score out of all the vehicles. So, what gives away that it's a sleeper? Pretty much nothing besides the wheels. But that's it, like, just the wheels, and those are a bit on the wide side, but even then, like, you can't really tell that it's a sleep, um, sleeper-ish vehicle, so 9. Now, the, the thing is, here's the last scoring. If it's, um, how nice it is to drive if it's a sleeper, but here's the thing. I haven't personally really called this thing a sleeper, because... I expected a way bigger engine or something like this. I I can see that this is a tuned stock engine pretty much. Or something really similar to it. And it pushes out 150 horsepower. So, and I mean 150 for this kind of a hatchback is a pretty nice amount, I'll be honest. It's a pretty nice amount. So in general, this thing is fun to drive, like, I actually do enjoy driving underpowered vehicles, but, which are really light and, and sort of like this kind of a combination, I really do enjoy driving them, this is kind of fun, I mean, it is fun, not kind of fun, but it's not exactly a sleeper, this is your basically perfect hot hatch, 
So, how much I enjoyed driving this compared to actual sleepers in this challenge. Hmm. Well, at least it didn't have any issues. It actually handled really well. Despite not having the power to put down. I'll give it a, a 5. Which is not the worst rating between all the vehicles. There are two vehicles below it. Which were actually built for this challenge. So, I don't really see that as something bad. This is this is actually a really nice build. Like, this is a, re a genuine, almost a genuine replica build. Like, there was a, he sent it another file, which was the stock. I didn't really look at it, because I'm looking for the modified version. But, this is this, basically. Really close. All I can say, great job, man. Really good job. But now, you're probably wondering about who winners. So, the winner in this challenge overall, in my opinion, has to be the Mini Cooper. I mean... In overall, it has the highest score overall. And it looks, looks great that it's fun to drive. Like, holy shit. And you can handle it when you actually try to. Oh shit. That was not intended. Like, the Mini Cooper is amazing. Like, whoever built this, great job, dude. You built a fun car. If only I had the skills to drive it properly. Well, this is amazing. And fun is, of course, not the only thing I'm looking for. I actually did a lap with this. And it handled pretty damn nice. This is first place. Like, the challenge overall. And now, first place visually. Mm, visual first place. Um, here's the thing, I kind of want to give it to the Porsche, to actually, but since it doesn't fit in the challenge at all, kind of, I can't really give, give even the visual winner of it. The Land Rover is really damn nice, I like it, but it's way too much dropped for this challenge, like, the drop is way too massive. Um, winner visually definitely has to be Oldsmobile Delta. This, this thing is just... I don't know, man. He built it, and it looks nice. I mean, I kind of don't like this part on the rear lights, but the front is so well made. It's actually really nicely designed. Even with the stock original wheels. And this is probably the second place in the whole challenge, like visually and second place. What I could put against this thing visually is most likely the Volkswagen Transporter. Because I could see the insane amount of detail put into it in the time. Like, I can't really have two winners for the visuals. But if I could. This thing would be sec definitely second place, or or even right next to this, visually. Because, as I said, the amount of detail put into this is just wow. Like, this is just wow when it comes to the amount of detail. It might not be the most prettiest vehicle because the insane wheel size and it's th them sticking out so much. But this is wow. Anyway, I think it's time for me to end the stream. Loved reviewing your vehicles, dude, guys. Pristine, pristine work.
Thank you for watching. See ya.